iPhone users rejoice, at least if you hate Siri, because it's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody, and Google Assistant is now on iOS. Now, given Apple's propensity to lock down its OS, it comes as no surprise that Assistant is not quite as easy to launch as Siri. After all, with Siri, you can use the hot word, hey Siri, and you will be able to get straight into its functionality and do a lot of different things. However, when it comes to Google Assistant, you have to say, okay, Google, only after opening up the app. So once you're all set up with the Google Assistant, how does it compare to Siri? Well, in a lot of ways, Assistant actually proves to be a bit better than Siri. However, third-party limitations kind of put them on even footing. You might be wondering if you can make a call or text using Assistant, and you definitely can. The experience is about the same. When saying something like, call Joshua Vergara, Assistant brings up the number and places the call with the option to cancel the call. And then when you say, text Joshua Vergara, Assistant asks you for the message, then asks you to confirm before booting you over to messages where then you have to press send. Siri is able to finish these steps without you having to do extra input, but Google also natively does this on Android. We loaded up music and Siri opens up Apple Music by default and plays music automatically, while Assistant requires you to choose between something like YouTube and playing via Apple Music. Searching for specific songs will make you choose between the two and then it will default to that for future ones unless you specify exactly which application you want to use. This is really an example of how these two different ecosystems, iOS and Android, are really trying to coexist here, but there are always going to be a few pitfalls in the translation from one to the other, which is not really surprising to us. But if you use Google's own apps instead of Apple's, then you'll probably love Assistant the way that many Android fans do. To send an email, you tell Assistant who to send it to, and it will go straight into Gmail. Otherwise, you can also do navigation, and it will use Google Maps instead of Apple Maps, which is a good thing if you have it installed. Assistant also now has the updated Explore page that some Android users have been enjoying already, in which you can find useful suggestions, as well as a separate tab called Your Stuff, where it can show everything that you have done via the Assistant application. So overall, iOS does limit Google Assistant just a little bit, but that is the disconnect between these two ecosystems as we mentioned earlier. There are some features that Google Assistant does on Android that aren't available on iOS, but we're sure that that can come in different updates later on, whether it's on the app side or even on the iOS side. And that kind of development is something that we're looking forward to. After all, this is the developer conference, Google I.O. 2017, where we have brought you a lot of great coverage over at AndroidAuthority.com. So make sure you go check that out and then watch all of our great videos here on the YouTube channel by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, because we are your source for all things Android.